So in this lecture, I will present weak sequentially compactness. So let me start with the definition. We consider x a Banach space, a set C, which is a subset of x, is said to be a weak sequentially compact subset if for every sequence xn, xn in C, there exists a point x in x and a subsequence nk, so a subsequence from this sequence xn, such that x and k converge weakly to x. So the set C, a subset C of x, will be said weakly, sequentially compact, if whatever sequence xn in C, we can find a subsequence nk and a point x in x, or, and actually, we will require this point x to be in C, so a point x in C, such that the uh, sequence x and k will converge weakly to x. So this is the definition. And my first observation is that, well, if C is weakly sequentially compact, then it is bounded. Bounded meaning that there exists, so this means that there exists a constant C0 such that x, the norm of x, is bounded for, by C0 for all x in the set C. And uh, so how do we prove that? Well, assume by contradiction, so it's a proof by contradiction, I assume by contradiction that C is not bounded. So C not bounded means that for all n in n, for all n larger than 1, we can find a point xn in C such that the norm of xn it's larger or equal than n, right? So I'm assuming that C is weakly sequentially compact and that it's not bounded, and I will find some contradiction. So since C is not bounded, I can find a sequence xn in C such that the norm of xn is larger than n for all n. So now since um, C is weakly sequentially compact, this means that there exists a point x in C, and there exists a subsequence nk, such that x and k converge weakly to x. But we, ha we have seen in the previous lecture that if we have a sequence x and k, uh, x and k converging weakly to some point, then the sequence is bounded. So it follows from a theorem of the previous lecture that if this sequence weakly converges to x, then it's bounded. So it exists a C0 such that the norm of x and k is bounded by C0 for all k. And here we have a contradiction because on the one hand, x and k is larger or equal than n k, and this is diverging to plus infinity, and on the other hand, x and k, the norm of x and k is bounded. So we get from these two uh, sentences a contradiction, and this proves that indeed any weakly sequentially compact set has to be bounded. Otherwise, we can find a contradiction. So the main theorem of this short lecture states that if the space x is reflexive, then the ball of radius 1 is weakly sequentially compact. So x is a Banach space. 
assume that this Banach space is reflexive, then what I claim is that if B01 repre represents the ball of radius 1, so this is the set of all points x in x such that the norm of x is bounded by 1, then this ball is weakly sequentially compact. And so you have to remember that we proved that the ball of radius 1, so this set, is not weakly compact for the strong topology. And now this theorem is telling you that, well, if the space is reflexive, and recall the space is reflexive if x double prime is equal to x, well, if the space, the Banach space is reflexive, then the ball is compact for the weak topology. And this will be an extremely useful um, result. We will essentially use weak convergence or weak topology due to this fact, due to the fact that uh, the ball of radius 1 is compact. So this result is extremely important and extremely useful. It will be used many, many times in the next lectures. So now um, let me prove this result. And I will first assume that x is uh, separable. And well, then we, I, will, I will first assume this extra assumption and then remove this extra assumption. So let's assume that x is uh, separable. From this, we get, since the space is reflexive, we get that x double prime is se separable. Well, because x double prime is equal to x. And we have seen in a previous lecture that if x double prime is separable, then x prime is separable. Which means that um, we can find a set, a subset of x prime, which is dense and countable. So let me call, let me take mj, so d, let me call this set d. d is a countable set in x prime, which is dense. So we have a family, mj, which, is, uh, which I'm calling d, which is at the same time countable and dense in x prime. And I will be using um, this set in the proof of this theorem. So at this point, I will erase, I need some space, so it will erase everything and will just keep the fact that we introduce this set D, which is uh, dense and countable in X prime. So here, remember, I'm taking X, a Banach space, which is reflexive. I assumed furthermore that it's separable, and I want to prove that the ball of radius one, it's weakly sequentially compact. And for the moment, I just introduced this set D, which is dense and countable in X prime. So the set D is formed by these sets MJ. So to prove that uh, this set is weakly sequentially compact, I fix a sequence Xn in this set. And my mission is to find a subsequence x and k. So I need to find a subsequence x and k and a point x in the ball b01 of radius 1, such that x and k converge weakly to x. So this is my goal. I'm, giving, I'm given a se sequence xn in this ball, and I have to find a subsequence and a point in this ball for which x and k converge weakly to x. So, um, well, let's start from with m1, so the first element in the set D. 
And let's consider the sequence of complex of real numbers m1 xn. Well, what I claim is that this sequence, it's a bounded sequence. Why it's bounded? Because if I take the absolute value of m1 xn, this is bounded by the norm of m1 times the norm of xn. But xn belongs to the ball. And this means that the norm of xn is bounded by 1. So this sequence, the absolute value of this sequence, is bounded by the norm of m1. Since this sequence of complex of real numbers is bounded, I can find a sequence, a subsequence nk, such that m1 x and k converge to a complex of real number. And I will call the limit a of m1. OK, so this sequence uh, converge. I have a bounded sequence here, so I can extract a subsequence which converge. So let's call nk the subsequence for which this uh, subsequence converge. And let me call a of m1 the limit. And it follows from uh, this inequality that a of m1 is bounded by the norm of m1. So m1 is an element of x prime. It has a norm. And what we know is that, well, the limit is bounded by the norm of m1. And now I can repeat. I can repeat this argument by looking. Here I considered m1. So let's go to m2. So m2, and let me consider the subsequence x and k, which I extracted in the first step. So let's say that this is step 1. And now I'm step 2. And in step 2, I'm considering m2 and the sequence x and k, which I obtained in step 1. And again, I claim that this sequence is bounded. And this sequence is bounded by uh, exactly the same argument. So this is bounded by the norm of m2, the norm of x and k. But the elements x and n belong to the ball of radius 1. So this is bounded by 1. So this is bounded by the norm of m2. So I have here m2, x, and k, a bounded sequence. And I know that I can extract in the real line or in the complex plane. For any bounded sequence, I can extract a subsequence which converge. So there exists a further sequence x and k prime. So this is a sub subsequence, a subsequence from this subsequence, for which m2 of x and k prime converge to some real complex number, which I'm calling am2. And again, since the absolute value of this uh, sequence is bounded by m2, the limit is also bounded by the norm of m2. So what I know is that a m2, it's bounded by the norm of m2. And I can go on. In, next, in the step 3, I will consider that sub-subsequence and m3. And I will repeat the same argument to extract from this sub-subsequence a new sub-sub-subsequence for which m3 of this subsequence will converge. So I can repeat that. And now I can use a Cantor diagonal argument to obtain a sequence nk, so a subsequence from the original sequence, with um, the following property that for all j, mu j of this subsequence which I constructed converge to a mj. 
Okay? So by repeating this step by step, and by using the Cantor diagonal argument, at the end, I can extract a subsequence nk, such that for all j, mj of x and k converge. I'm representing the limit by amj. And what I know is that the norm of amj, it's bounded by the norm of mj. So for the moment, I obtained a sequence, a subsequence x and k, such that mj of x and k converge to a limit, which I'm representing by amj. And the norm of amj, it's bounded by the absolute value, sorry, of amj. It's bounded by the norm of mj. So I will erase everything and just keep this information. So uh, let me recall what we are trying to prove. We have a sequence xn in the ball of radius 1. We want to show that there exists a subsequence and a point x in this ball for which x and k converge weakly to x. What we proved up to now is that starting from this sequence, we could find a subsequence nk such that <coughs> mj x and k converge to some limit, which I'm representing by a of mj, for all mj in this dense subset d. And we could also show that m, the absolute value of a mg is bounded by mj. Now I claim the following, that for all m in x prime, m of x and k converge. So this sequence of uh, real or complex numbers converge. So here I know that this is true for m, j, and d. What I claim is that we can extend this limit for all m in x prime. And let me represent by a of m this limit. So this is uh, what we want to prove. And to show that this sequence converge, we will show that it's in fact Cauchy. And also, we will prove that this inequality extends to the space x prime, so that the limit a of m is bounded by the norm of m. So to prove um, that this sequence converge, we will show that it's Cauchy. So I want to show that m of x and k is Cauchy. Well, to prove that it's Cauchy, let's fix some epsilon positive. And once this epsilon has been fixed, since the set D is dense, I can find mj in D such that the norm of mj minus m is bounded by epsilon over 3. So there exists mj in D such that the norm of mj minus m it's bounded by epsilon over 3. Now I can prove uh, that this sequence is Cauchy. To show that it's Cauchy, let's compare two, um, two terms. So let's compare m, x, and k with m, x, and j. And I want to show that this is bounded by epsilon, provided k and j are large enough. In order to estimate that, I will introduce mj. So I will bound this expression by m x and k minus mj x and k. And so let me change here uh, nj because I'm using mj already. I'm using j already, so let's call that l. So I have m x and k minus m j and x and k plus m j x and k minus m j x and l plus let me write here the third term plus m j x and l minus 
m, x, n, l. So this is just the triangle inequality. Now we will estimate the first third term. This first term I will estimate it by m minus the norm of m minus mj times the norm of x and k. But the norm of x and k, it's bounded by 1 because this sequence belongs to the ball of radius 1. So this first term, it's bounded by the norm of m minus mj. And by our choice of mj, this is bounded by epsilon divided by 3. And the same bound applies to the last term, to this term. We can again estimate this term by the norm of mj minus m times the norm of x and l, which is bounded by 1. So this last term, it's also bounded by epsilon over 3. So in this inequality, in the right-hand side, the first and the third terms are bounded by epsilon over 3. So I will just erase them and write that this is bounded by 2 times epsilon divided by 3 plus the second term. Now, for that j fixed, I know that the sequence mj, x, and k converge. So this means that I, I can find a k naught such that if k and L are larger than k naught, then this difference is bounded by epsilon over 3. And if this difference is bounded by epsilon over 3, this means that for all k and L larger than k naught, this difference is bounded by epsilon. And this proves that, indeed, the sequence m, x, and k is Cauchy. If it's Cauchy, it converge, and we just proved our claim that for all m in x prime, the sequence m, x, and k converge to a limit which I'm representing by a of m. So let me erase what the proof of this claim. And now let's show the bound. So we proved that m, x, and k converge to am. And now I claim that the absolute value of am is bounded by m. Well, and this is clear because am is the limit in k of m, x, and k. Now, so the absolute value, it's also uh, equal to the limit of the absolute value. And we can bound um, each term of this sequence by the norm of m times the norm of x and k, but the norm of x and k is bounded by 1. So each term of this sequence is bounded by the norm of m, and therefore the limit is also bounded by the norm of m. So we have um, this bound which we claimed. So let me summarize what we did up to now. We started from a sequence x and k in the ball. By assuming that the space is separable, we could find a subsequence nk such that for all m in x prime, m, x, and k converge to a limit, and this limit is bounded by the norm of m. So I will raise and then conclude the proof. So up to now, we proved that there exists a subsequence nk such that for all m in x prime, so for all bounded linear functional in x, m of x and k converge to am, and am, it's bounded by the absolute value of am, it's bounded by the norm of m. So now my claim is that a as a function from x prime to our field k, which is either the real numbers or the complex number, it's a bounded linear functional, so that actually a belongs to x double prime. And this is clear because, well, it's clear that a is linear. So if you take 
m and m prime, a of m plus m prime is the limit of m plus m prime of this sequence, and it's clear that a of m plus m prime is equal to a m plus a m. It's also clear that a alpha m is equal to alpha a m. So it's clear that a is a linear functional, and this inequality tells that a is bounded, so indeed a belongs to x double prime. But now the space is reflexive. This means that x double prime is equal to x, which means that there exists an element x in x such that a of m is equal to m of x. Yeah. Since x is reflexive, this means that all bounded linear function on x prime can be represented by an element in x. Well, I claim that this element in x has norm bounded by 1. And this is clear because we know that under this representation, the norm of A is equal to the norm of X. But by this inequality, the norm of A is bounded by 1. So the norm of A is bounded by 1. The norm of X is equal to the norm of A. This proves that X has norm bounded by 1. And my final claim, so actually X is an element of the ball of radius 1. And this, was, this is exactly the element we were looking at, looking for, because, well, we know that for all m in x prime, m x n k, so we know that for all m in x prime, m x n k converge to a of m. But what is a of m? a of m, it's m of x. So this is equal to m of x. So we proved that for all bounded linear function on x, m of x and k converge to m of x. And this is exactly saying that x and k converge weakly to x. So we proved that, indeed, there exists a subsequence n k, and there exists a point x in the ball of radius 1 such that x and k converge weakly to x. So this proves that, indeed, under the assumption that the Banach space x is reflexive and separable, the ball of radius 1 is weakly sequentially compact. So we proved uh, this theorem under the assumption that the space is separable. So now I want to remove uh, this assumption. And this is uh, the way we are going to proceed. Let me introduce why. This is the closed linear space generated by this sequence xn. So let me uh, repeat what we want to prove. We want to prove that the ball of radius 1 is weakly sequentially compact. For that, we fix a sequence xn in this ball. And we want to find a subsequence nk and a point x in this ball, such that x and k converge weakly to x. So this is what we want to prove. So we start from this sequence xn in the ball, and we want to extract a subsequence which converge. So the first step is to introduce this set y, which is the closed linear subspace generated by this sequence xn. It's clear that y it's separable. And, well, I leave it to you to check, but by definition of the space Y, you can always write any element of Y as a limit of points alpha j, x, n j, j1 to p, where these alpha j's belongs to um, a dense and countable subset of k. 
and since well this family is countable we get that y it's uh, separable so i leave it to you to check that y it's indeed a separable set and what uh, we are going to do is to work in the space y instead of the space uh, x because y is separable and x maybe not so since x is reflexive and y it's a closed linear subspace of x then y it's reflexive we prove that so now we have a space y which is a Banach space which is at the same time separable and reflexive and therefore we can apply the previous theorem so the part of the theorem which I just proved to show that there exists a subsequence x and k such that for all m in y prime so these are the bounded linear functional defined on y and there exists x in y, x bounded by 1, such that m, x, and k converge to m of x. Right? We, I define, I constructed this space y. y is reflexive and separable, so I can apply the result already proved that uh, from this sequence of point x n which belong to the space y I can extract a subsequence x and k which has the following property well and I can find a point x in y whose norm is bounded by 1 such that for all m in y prime m x and k converge to m of x this is uh, exactly what the first part of the proof of this theorem gives me. So now we are ready to complete uh, the proof of this theorem. So let me just remind you what we did. We introduced this set Y, which is the closed linear space generated by Xn, the sequence from which we started. And from the first part of the proof, we found a subsequence, X and K, and a point x in y whose norm is bounded by 1 such that m of x and k converge to m of x for all m in y prime if i can replace this y prime by x prime i would conclude that x and k converge weakly to x because well for all bounded linear functional we have the convergence the problem is that we don't know that this is true for all m in x prime we know only for the bounded linear functions which are defined on y which is this space we introduce so we have to extend this convergence to from the space y prime to the space x prime so let's consider l in x prime so l it's a bounded linear functional defined in x let me represent it by l of y its restriction to y so y it's a closed linear space so y it's a closed linear subspace of x so if I have a bounded linear functional defined on x I can restrict it to y and get a bounded linear functional now defined on y and the definition well it's clear if you want to compute ly of z for z an element in y this is just l of z we have seen these restrictions and extension in previous lectures so let me represent by l of y the restriction to y of a bounded linear functional defined on x well l of y it's an element of y prime it's a bounded linear functional defined on one prime therefore by uh, this limit we know that l y of x and k 
converge to L y of x. Well, but by definition, since x and k belongs to y, by definition, this is L of x and k. And also, since x is an element of y, this is also equal to L of x. So what we just proved is that whatever bounded linear functional defined on x, L of x and k indeed converge to L of x. This proves that this limit holds not only for bounded linear functionals defined on y, but also for bounded linear functionals defined on x. And since the norm of x is bounded by 1, we have an element in the ball of radius 1, and we proved that the sequence x and k converge to x weakly, because this result holds, as we have seen, for all elements of x prime, and this completes the proof of the theorem. So let me conclude this uh, lecture with uh, the following remark, which I already made, but I want to stress it. We just proved that if x is a Banach space which is reflexive, then the ball of radius 1 is weakly sequentially compact. And this is uh, compactness. It's an extremely useful uh, tool. And this is why this uh, theorem and the weak topology is so important. Because we have uh, seen before that for the strong topology, B01 is not compact for the strong topology. So while it's not compact for the strong topology, we just proved that if the space is reflexive, it's compact for the weak topology. And, um, and this explains why both the weak topology is important and why, well, and compactness shows why uh, this result is uh, important because, well, if you want to extract converging subsequence, it would be enough to prove that actually they are bounded.